All right, Doug, it's time for a lightning round. We're talking NFL on on Saturday. Yeah, that's that's the deal. NFL on Saturday. What bowl games? Forget six bowl games. We got three NFL games and FCS. FCS as well. Oh, okay. So you're gonna be sitting in front of that television all day. I'm debating long. not going to the UFC because of that. Man, that's gonna be such a good card. Such a good card. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this graphic here. NFL Saturday, three games, as you said, Doug, and the, all the home teams are favored in this one. Not a big number for any of those games, but first we'll start with the Vikings and the Bengals. Bengals, uh, three and a, three point favorites. Forty and a half is a decent line or a decent decent number on that. So, what do you think about that game? All right, so this number was three and a half early in the week. Vikings announced that Nick Mullins was going to be the quarterback instead of uh, um, the 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 rocket scientist Josh Dobbs. So, what do they call him? The pastor or not? You know, yeah. the, I uh, I like the favorite. I think the Bengals have been undervalued the last couple of weeks. I was on them last weekend. I'm on them this week. I don't think much of this Vikings team. More so, I think Nick Mullins stinks. I I, I he looked competent under Shanahan. But we know Shanahan is a wizard and does that. I don't think Mullins has anything. And let's be let's be honest. Dobbs beat out Mullins. Let's not forget a guy who was just traded for like middle of the week and he's beating him out. So there's a reason Mullins wasn't he wasn't doing stuff in practice. Let's just put it that way. But I think it's a last resort. Now Justin Jefferson is back. I think that contributed to the line move. So the line went from three and a half to three, and the over under went from about thirty eight to forty and a half. Wow! So to your point, we should see some points, like a decent amount of points. I think this Bengals offense has all the weapons, right? You do with Chase and Mixon and all that, you know. But the question is, and I and I like what Browning. See, he's been playing well. This is what a pro better told me. This he goes Browning would be thriving in the Niners system. He came out. He had all the pedigree, stud high school quarterback, yeah. very good at Washington. Yeah, if you just put him in all these weapons, like he looked good on Monday Night Football because he had good weapons and he has the chops. Yeah, he has the right met, you know, the the pedigree and the metrics and all that in terms of his height, weight, and all that stuff. So, I'm going to keep riding this Bengals train. I think Vikings are pretty poor now. Jefferson could change things, but I don't believe in Mullins. I'll I'll lay the three with the home team here. All right, okay, sounds good. How about the Steelers? Steelers. You probably don't want to see anything that says Steelers. The Steelers and the Colts. This is a terrible game, by the way. Forty two and a half. And uh, minus one and a half for the Colts. So minus one and a half for the Colts. Yeah, so this Indy team's like smoke and mirrors. They're in the playoff picture, things like that. Pittsburgh has lost back-to-back games. People were talking Tomlin Coach of the Year, that they were going to go to the playoffs with 11 wins, but then you lose to Arizona at home and then New England at home. I know he's got three wins. But I kind of like Pittsburgh here. I think it's the right side. Um, I really like him in a teaser. I think this is the case. Look, Minshew tries to do too much sometimes in the pocket. You cannot do that against the Steelers' defense. They will eat you alive. And this indie defense is terrible. They've gone over five of the six home games this year. The game total has. Their team total has gone over as well. But it's the defense. They have the most overs in the entire NFL. They're 9-4 and four to the over. Wow. It's their defense and then Minshew. So I think... More full week of practice, we can change for Trubisky mobility. This Titan, excuse me, this Colts defense is leaky. I think that I think the Steelers come to play off back to back losses. We know we talk about this all the time. Recency bias. Forget yep. what you last saw. I think I think the I think the Steelers defense is going to be humming and looking, going to take Minshew's head off. So, what we what I like to do here is a teaser leg. Okay, you tease anything, any line six points. So when you get plus one and a half, that doesn't mean a whole lot in the actual point spread. But if you can tease it to seven and a half, because you in teasers you get to adjust for six points, you get to go through three, six, and seven. Really key numbers. Relatively low scoring game expected. I think it's the right side, the right move with the Steelers, because I think they're going to win the game. But I like them in a teaser leg if it comes down and Tomlin's conservative and all that and loses by a few. I just think they're going to be in this game. I think you're getting the best effort from a team that just lost twice to inferior teams at home. I would agree with that. They, they have to be mad. They have to be mad. Yeah. In this game, I actually think it's a pretty good game to watch. The uh, the next one, the Broncos. Man, the Broncos. Who the heck are they? Who the heck, where are they come from? Right. Taking on the Lions. The Lions are favored by four. Forty eight is the number. Of, that forty eight. That's a lot of. That's points. a lot of points, especially in this season. But you know, we've seen some over unders. I I've had a good pulse on this Lions team. Last week, I was on the Bears. Arthur's dog of the you know week or whatever. Oh, okay, there you go. And. I think they're a team that's just not quite ready to take the big step. And I think they go, they're going to win the division. And I think they're – so they lose games that – you have to handle success. Like what the what the Eagles do is is not easy. I don't care if it looks pretty or not. Like to handle success and continue success is really difficult. 
And that that's why teams don't you know run the table in the NFL um, because the, the the level of parity. We just saw what the Packers did, right? They're riding high after a few upset wins, and they're just like muffing punts, getting stripped, like stupid, stupid mistakes. It's not even they just got beat. They they, they made dumb. They did dumb things because their focus wasn't there because they're reading the press clippings, so to speak. I think when the Lions lose, they sort of figure stuff out and get back on track. You would think I, so. I believe they've won and covered six straight off an outright loss dating back to last season. So they're not a mature team where they handle success and can keep winning, but off a loss, they get kicked in the mouth. I think they'll cover this number. It was five, got bet down, kind of no man's land between four and five. I lean to the minus four, and pick them leagues, I'm laying it. I just don't want to bet against this Broncos team, but I think there's a little too much firepower for Detroit. I just don't trust their secondary that much. I think Wilson can do some stuff, but I, I think on that turf in Detroit, I think they're. I think ultimately, you know, they win by six or seven. They need to get. They need to get right so to speak. And the Broncos, it's about teams dealing with success. Right now, people are, yeah, they're on the Broncos. The Broncos are playing well, playing well. Sean Payton's right at the ship. Yeah, at some point, they're going to have, I think they're going to revert back to the... We'll see. I mean, they obviously smacked uh, the Chargers last week. This is back-to-back road games. It is tough. Yeah. Back-to-back road games. You've seen teams lay some eggs, so I think the stars align here for Detroit to be the right side. All right, your lightning round. Three NFL games on Saturday. 